with the COVID-19 vaccine on the cusp of being approved and save the entire civilization and the world. That's sarcasm, by the way. Um, I just want to um, read the Wikipedia page uh, about the history of one of the manufacturer or makers of the vaccine, Moderna, uh, Moderna Therapeutics. So in 2010, Mode RNA Therapeutics was formed to commercialize the research of stem cell biologist Derek Rossi. Rossi has developed a method of modifying RNA, modifying mRNA, by first transfecting it into human cells, then de differentiating it into stem cells, which could then be further re differentiated into desired target cell types. That's a lot of fucking differentiations there, bro. Um, Rossi approached fellow Harvard University faculty member Tim Springer, who solicited co investment from Kenneth Chien, Bob Langer, and venture capital firm flagship ventures yeah sounds good that's i guess that's how every uh biotech companies nowadays being funded or founded um, tim springer let's see this name looks really familiar is he a nobel prize winner uh no he is not Okay, so Tim Springer is an immunologist and a Latham family professor at Harvard Medical School. There's something that happened to one of the Harvard faculties. I forgot what's his name. Um, uh, let's see. Is there... Okay. Nope. So Tim Springer was not the one who had some trouble with China and got arrested. I got confused. Heard about another Harvard professor who was in trouble. Um, but that's not Tim. Sorry, Tim. I uh, thought you were someone else. Okay. Back to Wikipedia. And... 2011, the CEO of Flagship Ventures, now Flagship Pioneering, Nubar Afeyan, brought in European... Who's Nubar Afeyan? Let's see. He is an Armenian-American entrepreneur, inventor, and philanthropist. He is best known for co-founding the biotechnology company Moderna. Okay. He brought in European pharma sales and operations executive Stefan Bensel as CEO. And Fayan personally owned 19.5% of Moderna and was the largest single shareholder, while his fund, Flagship Pioneering, owned 18%. Oh, okay. So, yeah, okay, so Flagship Ventures basically, or the CEO of this venture firm basically brought in a weathered, or not weathered, a seasoned pharma executive elsewhere to run this company that is newly founded. And in March 2013, Moderna and AstraZeneca signed a five-year exclusive option agreement to discover, develop, and commercialize mRNA treatments in the therapeutic areas of cardiovascular, metabolic, and renal diseases and selected targets for cancer. The agreement included a $240 million upfront payment to Moderna, a payment that was, quote, one of the largest ever initial payments in a pharmaceutical industry licensing deal that does not involve a drug already being tested in clinical trials, a.k.a. hustling. And 8% um, share of Moderna. So AstraZeneca bought 8% share of Moderna with this deal, 
As of May 2020, only one candidate has passed phase one trials, a treatment for myocardial, myocardial ischemia called AZD80-A601. Okay, well, um, at least they got something into uh, the clinic for all that money that was being paid. In January of 2014, Moderna and Alexion Pharmaceuticals entered a $125 million deal for orphan diseases in need of therapies. Alexion paid Moderna $100 million for 10 products, 10 product options to develop rare disease treatments, including for Krigler Najjar syndrome. Yeah, that, that sounds uh, like a pretty rare disease. Um, using Moderna's mRNA therapeutics platform. By 2016, Bensel, that's the CEO of Moderna, told an audience of JP Morgan Chase investors that the work with Alexion should shortly enter human trials. However, by 2017, the program with Alexion has been scrapped as the animal trials showed that Moderna's treatment would never be safe enough to use in humans. Yeah, that's a bummer, but I'm not really sure that Moderna people didn't know about this when they entered this agreement with Alexion. But again, like, hustling is the way that our culture works nowadays, so I don't blame them. Yeah, do it. Do it by all, by all means. I mean, just, uh, yeah, just make sure that you can keep doing it so that, you know, your, your, the source of your, your wealth doesn't dry up for hustling. The trick here is that you gotta keep that hustling going. So you hustle and then you kind of reap the benefit, but you can't just stop right there because you want to also hustle in the future. So you gotta, you know, keep a little bit of hope going. That's exactly with what that AstraZeneca deal uh, with Moderna, at least one of those treatments that they were envisioning was able to enter the clinic, uh, go into a clinical trial. So, um, yeah, that, I guess not that whole collaboration was being scrapped because that would have been. In 2014, after disappointing uh, standalone therapeutic trials, Moderna moved to focus on mRNA vaccines, given that efficacy issues aside, mRNA will always stimulate a level of antibody development in subjects, meaning they're playing it safe. Um, they basically scrapped their original technology that the company was founded upon and went into a safe um, path where the proof that it will, or the proof that the, the way the drug might work. So there's already proof, a safe bet, that the therapeutic approach might work, but um, yeah, they just don't have anything developed yet. So basically, at this point, this is what startups call a pivoting point. So they went, they completely changed directions and now went into mRNA vaccines. Well, what a payoff um, this would be three years down the line. Oh, no, that's in 2014. Okay, six years down the line for this company. Um, the change in strategy had risk given the materially lower margins of vaccine development called loss leaders by some Moderna employees with some senior employees and industry experts questioning the future viability of the company. Rossi left the company. So the founder which is a stem cell biologist, Derek Rossi, left the company because they decided to pursue vaccines instead of the original therapeutic vision that they had. Um, but little did they know that this is probably what saved the company. Not only saved the company, but elevated the status of the company into the huge spotlight under the pandemic in 2020. In February 2016, a co-op at a co oh I think this is, I don't know how to say this an op-ed I think that's an opinion piece in Nature 
that's one of the most pretty prestigious <clears throat> publications in biological sciences. It criticized Moderna for not publishing any peer-reviewed papers on its technology, unlike most other emerging and established biotech companies, and compared its approach to that of the controversial failed Theranos. Yeah, you don't want to mention together in the same sentence as Theranos because, yeah, that basically is throwing shit onto your reputation. Uh, Elizabeth and Theranos, we can save that for another day, but that's, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a legendary scamming scandal, or, yeah, s scandal that has forever hurt the, bi <laughs> uh, the, the reputation of the biotech, um, industry in the entire startup world, but, I mean, it's good for Elizabeth, right? She, uh, she got away with it, so, it's all cool. In America, Go ahead and hustle, because there is very little downside of anything. Um, if there, there's, yeah, there's a, the culture of impunity of, for dishonest people in our, in our country, so it doesn't really matter. Just do it. If you have an idea to hustle, just fucking do it, okay? In September 2018, Thrillist published... Thrillist? Isn't that like a entertainment article or entertainment magazine? So Thrillist published an article entitled, Why This Secretive Tech Startup Could Be the Next Theranos. Well, spot on. Criticizing its reputation for secrecy and the absence of scientific validation or independent peer review of its research, though having the highest valuation by any U.S. private biotech company at more than $5 billion. Valuation doesn't mean shit these days. Um, yeah, so... It's, yeah, don't, don't take that too seriously, and, um, whatever billion, whatever billion dollar figure behind it, that's just, like, a whole bunch of hand-waving bullshit that, uh, the investors and people who's got a stake in the company has tried to blow up the whole image of the, not blow up, have tried to, um, what do you call it, yeah, sugarcoat the, the company to be what it's not. But, you know, this is how the game is played. So, don't hate the player, hate the game, bro. A former Moderna scientist told STAT, and that's a legitimate social media, well, it's not called social media um, publisher, but STAT, I think STAT is one of the companies that's, uh, or publishers that's kind of similar to the Huffington Post. I guess, I'm, I'm not sure, but it's, it's a reputable publication platform, and quote, it's a case of the emperor's new clothes, they're running an investment firm, then um, hopefully it also develops a drug that's successful, spot on, he couldn't have put it any better. And then we go into a period between 2018 to 2020. In 2018, the company rebranded as Moderna Inc. or INC with the ticker symbol mRNA. Um, yeah, how convenient. That's smart though. I gotta, gotta give them that. Um, it's, uh, not a lot of companies can put the technology that they're using as their as their ticker symbol on the NASDAQ. So, yeah, awesome. And further increased its portfolio of vaccine development. In December 2018, Moderna becomes or became the largest biotech initial public offering in history, raising 621 million Dollars. That's two hundred. That's twenty-seven million shares at twenty-three dollars per share on Nasdaq, and implying an overall valuation of seven point five billion for the entire company. Okay, so when they were initially founded, uh, it was let's see, what was the valuation? No, there was no valuation. Okay, but yeah, within just eight years of its founding. This company now stands at $7.5 billion in valuation. That is an astronomical achievement. 
um, in the name of science and innovation, but really it's just the game that, I guess, Wall Street and investors like to play on um, this bullshit called IPO to suck up money from the general public, um, which is what keeps our economy going and keeps the innovation going. So I guess it's, it's fine. It's the rule of the game. So you got to play it that way. The year-end 2019 SEC filings showed that Moderna had accumulated losses of $1.5 billion. Okay, so out of that $7.5 billion, um, yeah, $1.5 billion has been lost. So that means the company could have been valued at $9 billion should they not incur those losses. And with a loss of $514 million in 2019 alone, and had raised $3.2 billion in equity since 2010. As of December 2020, Moderna was valued at $60 billion, Which is today, actually. Okay, so from $7.5 billion, it just went up another tenfold now to $60 billion, Which is, yeah. Because, of course, that, that was because of the COVID-19 vaccine development. But still, you gotta... You gotta give them that. And for anyone who's bought Moderna stock um, before, I guess, June or July of 2020, um, yeah, hats off to you. And congratulations for your newly achieved status of being financially free. Um, so now you can turn around and reinvest, hopefully reinvest what you've gained from that Moderna piece into reinvest that into the stock market and help the economy recover. Don't just put it into your bank account and sit there um, and watch the rest of the world suffer like all the rich people do, okay? In March 2020, in a White House meeting between the Trump administration and pharmaceutical executives, Ben Sell told the president that Moderna could have a COVID-19 vaccine ready in a few months. The next day, the FDA approved clinical trials for the Moderna vaccine candidate, with Moderna later receiving investment of $483 million from Operation Warp Speed. Moderna's board member, Monsef Slawi, I don't know how to say that, was appointed the head scientist for the Operation Warp Speed, Warp Speed project. So, okay, I'm, I'm going to stop my reading here, but... As you can see, based on the history of this company, we are treating it like it's the savior of our entire future, civilization's future. And yeah, the the next, since the next coming, or since the coming of Christ, um, we are thinking that, yeah, our whole existence of humanity hinges on the success of a vaccine being developed by the company, but really its history suggests that this is just another company who was founded on probably some cool scientific idea, but had no real product behind its history. And it just totally hit the jackpot in the COVID-19 pandemic because of its position and its previous, yeah, because of its existing position in vaccine development, right place, right time, and completely propelled it into the spotlight and um, becomes a behemoth in the the whole media coverage in terms of the biopharma industry um, trying to save humanity. And that I just cannot agree with but this is this is the way our world is now and we don't have too much of a say in what we do that or what we can do to change our world's future because most of it is i mean actually 99.99 percent of our future is out of our hands it's outside of our control and for these people that are in control of our destiny because whether they've got the next vaccine candidate or whether they've got an enormous amount of money to mobilize the society's resources, just hope 
we just really hope that they take that social responsibility and help the rest of us to get to a place um, that isn't worse than where we were where we were before. Yeah, that's all I want to say about Moderna. And um, hopefully, I mean, I still hope that, you know, fingers crossed, the vaccine gets approved by the FDA. And um, whether, you know, most likely it works, but it's our world will never be the same place that it was before 2020. Um, nor any time at any point in history will a world return to a previous state after any kind of event. But, uh, yeah, just hopefully we can head to a better, a, a better direction. And, um, yeah, we're all tired of all this hustling and, and bullshit. So get on with it and enjoy the miserable lives that we have, I guess. Signing off.